I would now like to bring up our first honoree, Virginia Allen. And I'd like to ask our board member, Ellen Greenwich, to come up and tell us about Virginia. Um, I also want to let the honorees know that besides our awards that we have for them, we also have we also have certificates from uh, Edwina Martin, who's the public administrator, um, New York State Senator Jessica Garcello Spanton, PA Mike McMahon, and um, Staten Island Assemblyman Sam Perizzolo. So we'll be giving you those certificates. I bring you Virginia Allen, who I've known, actually, I have to tell you, since I used to take my granddaughter to the Staten Island Ballet for her ballet classes on Saturdays, and Virginia was always there helping out, make sure that the kids were where they were supposed to be, right? Um, and behaving themselves in, in that environment. So, I've known her for quite a long time, because my granddaughter's 15. She started going when she was like four. very much more to say about Virginia. It's been said, it's been written, it's been talked about, it's been photographed, it's been everything. So what I will say, when she was 16 years old, Virginia moved to Staten Island from Detroit to live with her aunt, Edna Sutton Ballard, who was a registered nurse at Seaview Hospital. Inspired by her aunt, she took a job as a nurse's aide in this children's hospital where she was able to work with TB patients. And many of you know that the cure for TB was discovered here on Staten Island at Seaview Hospital. And Virginia Allen was part of that group. This, this Opportunity created jobs for black women. Many of them were recruited from the South and from the Caribbean uh, to fill a void where white nurses didn't want to work. Ellen joined her aunt as a nurse and with care and kindness showed the patients. They named them the Black Angels. And Virginia Allen is carrying the torch for all of those that came before her. <laughs> Ms. Allen worked at Seaview from 1947 to 1957 and went on to work as a private duty and surgical nurse. And she worked in labor relations with 1199. Ms. Allen, remains a community leader. Every award that anyone has ever won in your lifetime, Virginia Allen has already won one. So I'm not going to go through the list. I will say that she is a woman of achievement, Staten Island woman of achievement. And as far as board membership, she's on the board of the Staten Island Ballet. She's with the Harriet Tubman Purple Hats. She's with Lambda Capital Moon. She's with the National Council of Negro Women. And it's on and on and on. New York State. New York State, there's many that she's on. She also serves as a docent at the Chambre Center for Research in Black Culture. So she travels to Harlem often to do her work there. She is a member of the Historical Society. She has had a reward a, named after her, the Virginia Allen and the Black Angels Scholarship Award, which was done by the Doctors and Nurses of Practice of Color Council. So. an honorary doctorate in humane letters from the Stat College of Staten Island. That's one of the awards. And Miss Allen is a 
woman of integrity and a woman who keeps her word. When she was with 1199, she had delegates and people that reported to her. She asked the woman, how did her children enjoy the circus? One of her delegates. And the delegate said, I never get tickets to the circus for my children. And Virginia said, well, next year and every year thereafter, you will get tickets. That following year, Virginia Allen remembered to get tickets for that woman and her children. And I know this story so well because that woman is my mother. So decades later, it's my honor and a privilege to award Virginia Allen another one of her many awards. And thank you for all you do for our community through opera exposure, connecting people to the opera who never knew they loved opera. I'm honored to be honored. And congratulations to the other honorees today, especially Nicole Reed Christopher. I've known since she was a teenager. And I would like to thank Illuminart and Arlene Sorkin for your warm and sincere friendship. My lifelong love for the arts started when I was a very young girl. My parents were talented and appreciated the arts as a vital part of our life. I vividly remember the salons on Sunday afternoons. After dinner, we would have music, poetry, and other readings. My mother and father played the piano, and I was designated the vocalist. I did study voice with a private teacher at the Detroit Conservatory of Music. And friends of my parents played other instruments. Those are wonderful memories. My daughter, who is no longer with us, loved to dance, especially ballet. She trained with the Alvin Ailey School for a very short time, and then moved on to Arthur Mitchell's Dance Theater of Harlem 
and studied with Carol Schulk. She wished to become a ballet dancer, but she became a nursing administrator and an artist. Therefore, I dedicate this honor to my beautiful daughter, Margot Renee, who I lost in 2002. But thanks to my family and friends in attendance here today, and those who unfortunately were unable to be here personally. My grandson, Purple, and his partner, Tasha. <laughs> Purple is also an artist. It runs in the family. My focus has always been to look forward to the next challenge. I love challenges. Tony Morrison said, we never shape the world. The world shapes us. And again, I would like to express my gratitude for this honor. Thank you.